Well, good morning and welcome to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy, and I'm very happy to be with you as we look at chapter 11 today of Max Licato's book, Traveling Light. <clears throat> today we have to discuss the topic of death. We're in the portion of the uh, shepherd psalm, the 23rd psalm, uh, that says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, the shadow that death um, sort of lingers over us. Uh, the sort of black cloud, we would say, that death brings with it. And uh, today we have to address the sting of death and the pain of grief and the lingering, uh, the lingering effects that death has um, on our lives. Now, I'm going to start this morning um, with, uh, I think, really Max Licato's basic point here is that um, it, death is hard. End of story. Whenever we lose someone who is close to us, and, and frankly, even if that person isn't like our greatest best friend, uh, when we lose someone whom we have uh, cared about, whom we have known, whom we've had a friendship with, whom we've had a relationship with, it is hard, period, end of story. It always is. Now, sometimes we might say that this person's death or that person's death was a little easier on us, but at the end of the day, death is hard, uh, end of story. And Max Licato uh, says this on page um, 90 of his book. He says, It's hard to bear, meaning death, it's hard to bear, because not everyone understands your grief. They did it first, or they might have at the funeral. They did it at the graveside, but they don't now. They don't understand grief lingers. And over on page 91, he says, Why does grief linger? Because you're dealing with more than memories. You are dealing with unlived tomorrows, you're not just battling sorrow, you're battling disappointment. You're also battling anger. It may be on the surface, it may be subterranean, it may be a flame, it may be a blowtorch, but anger lives in sorrow's house. Anger at self, anger at life, anger at the military, the hospital, or the highway system, but most of all, anger at God. Anger that takes the form of a three-letter question, why? Why him, why her, why now, why us? You and I both know we can't answer that question. Only God knows the reasons behind his actions. But here is a truth we can stand on. Our God is a good God. And so Lucado goes on to talk about all the ways in which God is good, including the blessing of death. Now, we might look at that from a worldly perspective and say, I don't know, Pastor, if I'm really ready to say that death is always a blessing. Is death really truly always a blessing? Well, it is. And uh, in order for me to help you understand that a little better today, I want to give you what I think are four, four key truths or realities, four key realities about death that we sometimes forget. Some of these Max Licato kind of brings up loosely in his, in his chapter here. Um, but I think there's a four reasons, four truths, realities that, um, that God's gift of death really truly is a blessing as hard as it is for us to experience when we lose someone. So the first reality I give you is this. Death is absolutely an answer to prayer. Um, now, I'm going to start by saying I don't think that death is always the answer to prayer. Okay? If we have someone who is, is laying in a hospital bed fighting for their lives and we're praying for a miracle, for God to intervene, to, for God to do something that the doctors say is impossible, that this person would recover and live, God can and does do that. Uh, life is an answer to prayer as well. Uh, living for tomorrow is an answer to prayer. But we have to remember in those moments that the difficult reality is that death is also an answer to prayer. 
It is, it is sort of one of the options, one of the ways God can answer us. I think sometimes we get in those moments when, when, when someone so close to us is about to die and we want to just grasp onto them and we want to say, okay, God, if you're a good God, you won't choose that option. You won't even, you won't even think that death is an option. But the reality is death is always an option. And, and, and God may have a, a very real and, and present purpose for bringing that um, brother or sister home with him. And so we have to remember first and foremost, a difficult reality, death is always an answer to prayer. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm uh, in some way suggesting here like things like you know, a suicide or an assisted suicide or euthanasia or something of that nature. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the reality that sometimes it's the Lord's time and um, the Lord is going to bring that person home. And that is indeed an answer to prayer. Now, secondly, then, I think we have to remember, if indeed death is a, an answer to prayer, then death is also, I think, um, one of the richest uh, instances of God's provision and protection for that particular person that we are praying for, and maybe for us too. There are so many ways that God could be protecting and providing for uh, for this person in those moments. You know, uh, not the least of which is pr- it could be the reality that um, maybe God is protecting this person from some uh, worse illness down the road. Maybe God is protecting them from some catastrophic accident. Maybe God is protecting them from uh, some sort of abuse at home. Uh, maybe God is protecting them from continued addiction. Uh, that he just knows they'll never they'll never defeat. I mean, there's a whole host of reasons why God might choose uh, death, and it is always in His provision and His protection for us. He provides that for us, and so that is indeed a blessing. And 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 you and I, brothers and sisters, if we really believe what is true about Jesus, that He died to forgive our sins, that when we confess Him with our mouths and we believe Him in our hearts, then He is He is good to us, and He stands before our Father and he pleads for us and we are welcomed home to life forever with him, then that makes death a blessing. And so death is God providing that blessing for us. And and so I think the second difficult reality we have to remember is that death is God's provision. It is one of the richest ways God provides for us. Now, I think the third reality we have to bear in mind is that death is always on God's time. I'm going to start by telling you that I struggle with the reality that suicide exists, that euthanasia exists, that uh, assisted suicide or mercy killing uh, exists, because I don't believe that those items are on God's time. Those are obviously on man's time. And I think the reason that we've Um, uh, for so long understood, and the Word of God has understood uh, those kinds of death, like murder, um, uh, euthanasia, uh, suicide, those kinds of things to be sin, is because it takes what is supposed to be on God's time, and and it somehow transfers it into our time. We get to decide, or whoever it is that's doing the the killing gets to decide. And so that's sinful, because we're, we're elevating ourselves to God. We're saying, well, God's timing is wrong. I don't trust his timing. My timing is better, and so I'm going to take this into my own hands. The reality, though, for us as believers in Jesus Christ is that death is always on God's time. And so when we stand next to the bed of someone who is dying, when we stand next to the bed of our spouse or a child, when we um, awake to sudden news that a spouse or child or a brother or a sister or some other family member has passed away, um, when uh, a catastrophic accident happens and um, and a, a loved one is taken away from us, death is always on God's time, never ours. And so the reality is it's always going to feel like the wrong time to us. It's never going to feel like the right time. I mean, I've experienced situations where we have been in the midst of praying for someone who is just really struggling at the end of their life. 
And we pray that the Lord would come quickly and take them home. And, uh, and in the midst of that, we sort of say, wow, it seems like, you know, we've spent two days praying for this person to go home and it seems to just be taking a long time. But then once that person does go home to the Lord, we go, wow, that went so much faster than I even think we were ready for. And, you know, it's never on our time. It's either too soon or too late. We're always uh, wondering about time and the reality is death always comes at God's timing. And so I think the fourth um, reality for us today then is this. Death is always loss here on earth. Death is always considered loss in this world. And, and just to kind of flesh that out, right? You know, we have these loved ones, spouses, children, um, parents, you know, all the other kinds of things. Death is a loss to us here on earth. But... It is always a gain in the next world, in the next life with Christ. See, we lose something here on earth. We lose a brother or sister. We lose our own lives. And we gain the truth and knowledge of eternity forever with that person. Now that can become difficult too, because what if that person isn't a believer? What if that person hasn't, as Romans 10 says, confessed with their mouth and believed in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead? What if, what if we aren't sure we're going to see that person? That makes the loss all that more tremendous. And the reality is the, the word tells us that there are some who will simply not believe. There are some who uh, will not find death to be a blessing, an answer to prayer, a provision, um, you know, God's perfect timing, uh, or a gain in this next life. And that, I think, brings us sort of to the heart of why, we, why we're having this discussion today. Nobody likes to talk about death. Nobody wants to be reminded of all these things. Um, why do we care about these four realities? Well, because I think that pushes us, urges us that those ones whom we love, everyone we encounter, but especially those whom we love, you know, why would we waste one moment when we could be sharing with them the love of Jesus Christ, the truth of the gain in the next world? We want to see them again. And we need to convince them, uh, we need to encourage them, we need to spur them on with the word of God of the truth of Jesus Christ. So let me reiterate for you these realities. Death is always an answer to prayer. Death is God's provision and protection for us. Death is always on God's time and death always is lost here on this earth, but gain when we are together with Jesus Christ. And so I hope those things will encourage you and especially those of you who might be experiencing uh, a great sense of grief right now. Um, I know grief lingers. I know the sting of death does not go away easily. Um, but I pray that for you and for the person whom you're grieving, uh, the, the blessing, protection, and provision of God in the gift that he gives, which is to, to die in this world and rise to life with him, is comfort for you. Um, I look forward to meeting again with you next week as we'll take a look at chapter 12. Um, until then, I hope you have a great week, uh, a very blessed week, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon.